I went for a walk in the forest, deciding to enjoy its tranquility and beauty. Slowly moving along the path, I felt the presence of something creepy and unpleasant. Everything around me inspired fear. The wind rustled the leaves slightly, creating a deceptive feeling of living breathing, and vague shadows glided among the trees, as if chasing me. Suddenly, I noticed several figures vaguely resembling people. They were dressed in dark turn signals, hiding from the eyes. Large black hats towered over their faces, making them even more mysterious and menacing. Their behavior was strange. They moved slowly and ghostly, like ghosts. I decided to pass by, but at one point everything changed. One of them, tall and thin, slid strangely in my direction. He had cold, creepy eyes, like black holes absorbing light. I felt panic engulfing me, but it was already too late. He twisted, as if an invisible force had penetrated his body and aimed his hand covered with a sharp silver spiral at me. I recoiled, desperately trying to get away, but he was faster. A silver spiral pierced my shoulder, causing unprecedented pain. I collapsed to the ground, feeling the blood covering my body. The other figures were slowly approaching, and I realized that now I would become a victim of unknown forces. They looked at me without any emotion, as if I was just a toy in their hands. The black eyes did not lag behind me, and in their bottomlessness I saw my reflection, as if they reflected my death. By force of will, I got to my feet and tried to run away, but the pain in my shoulder was too strong. Tracking my every step, they slowly moved behind me. The real hunt began. Forest paths have become endless labyrinths leading nowhere. They cursed me with their hidden powers and kept chasing me like a feast of hunters ready to kill their prey. My strength was running out and the pain in my shoulder was becoming unbearable. I fell to my knees and blood gushed out of my wound, staining the ground. I knew I was dying and my last hope was gone. But at that moment I decided not to give up. I forced myself to believe that I could survive this nightmarish night. I had to find a way to escape. I struggled to my feet and continued running through the maze of the forest. Soon I heard a rustle behind me and realized that the figures were clearly approaching. My pain turned into a fierce agony, but I didn't stop moving. The moonlight flickered through the foliage and with every step, everything fell dully silent. And then, in the distance, I noticed a faint glow. It came to me as if from another world, giving me the last hope. I quickened my steps, forgetting about the pain and fatigue. Step by step, the glow grew brighter, as if it was calling me, offering shelter. And finally, I got out into a clearing where an old, neglected house stood among beautiful, blooming flowers. The light from its windows cast long shadows surrounding me. This house was the last hope to stop this nightmare. My heart was pounding in my chest when I stepped out onto the porch, and my hand was shaking when I opened the door. The loud creak of the wooden door pierced the silence, and I entered the house, alert. Outside the door, a gloomy corridor was waiting for me, covered with cobwebs and the smell of mustiness. The light of the candle standing on the bedside table cast eerie shadows on the walls. Closing the door, I walked on, gradually getting used to the strange atmosphere of the house. The lamps on the ceiling were covered with a layer of dust, and the walls were decorated with gray mold. The rooms were empty, as if the inhabitants had long since disappeared. But what surprised me the most was that there were no signs of hunters around me. Was it a dream or reality? A silver key hanging on the wall attracted attention and crumpled the insides. I went up to him and grabbed him as a last chance to escape. The shovel I found in the drawer was my next salvation. I took it in my hands and, fully confident, moved to the front. Time seemed to stand still as I walked through the corridors and rooms of the house. I had to face a lot of dangers, slippery stairs, black caves of candle tips, and the continued gaze of black eyes, as if they were watching me. But I didn't give up. I walked forward, 
moving through the darkness. After passing through a maze of rooms and corridors, I finally found myself in the library. A breathtaking view appeared before me. The shelves filling the room were crammed with books and scrolls, dust and cobwebs covered every corner. But what was important was what I found in the library. In the burning fire, I noticed an old, mysterious book. Its cover was shabby, as if it had been through decades. On its pages, I found legends about the struggle with an unknown force that haunts people in the dark forests. The book said that this force cursed the forest, and now it craves blood and suffering. I realized that the hunters who had overtaken me were her servants, creatures captured by this terrible force. Realizing all this, I decided to find a way to resist these creatures and end their curse. Armed with the knowledge from the book and my unshakable faith, I went out into the forest again, ready to fight to the last drop of blood. More troubles and dangers stood in my way. Dark figures hiding in the bushes, sticking out from behind the trees. But I sincerely believed that there were no limits to my invulnerability. I was determined and didn't stop. Gradually, I began to notice how the creatures were weakening before my determination. I wasn't just a victim, I was a danger. I became their hunter, leading the mercs through obvious traps and into dead ends. My strong desire to survive flowed into an abundance of strength, and I used them to protect myself. Realizing that time was working against me, I found the cursed source of power and destroyed it. The explosion shook the ground, and I felt that the power was leaving the dark forest. Suddenly, the black eyes disappeared, and the darkness gave way to moonlight. The forest sounds returned, and the terrible night became the past. I returned to my house, leaving the dark problems of the forest behind me. I was still tormented by the pain left by the silver spiral, and the wound continued to bleed. But I was alive and that was enough. I realized that the terrible adventure in the forest had awakened a new fear and a new strength in me. Everything that has happened has changed me forever, and now I will be able to withstand unknown horrors. But still, sometimes at night, when darkness envelops the earth and the moon is hidden behind clouds, I hear the rustling of trees, ghostly screams and the smell of blood. My mind reminds me of the terrible past, the hunters and their black eyes. And then I realize that the dark forest will never let me go completely.